and the one that Sean and Topkin. Those are everybody this morning so far. How are you doing? Good, good. Right. Um, I went on to Candace um, earlier this morning just to check. Uh, am I correct in saying that none of you that I'm speaking to at the moment, because I know nobody else did, um, have not done the class test yet? Okay. No reply means you haven't done it yet. Um, you've got the rest of the day to do it. Um, I will check. I don't have class the second period, but I know that you are with Ms. Van Square. Um, I'm going to check and see if you're actually attending the class and if you're actually doing your, your online um, class test because you shouldn't be doing the class test in her class, please. Okay, you've got the rest of the day. It's not difficult. It's going to take half an hour of time. Um, but yeah, use the opportunity to 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 do some revision because before you know it, um, it's the end of the month, and then you have your term test, and then if you've done proper revision for for the class test, then it will be of great help. Right, what have we established so far in this chapter? What what is what's the essence of what we did yesterday? Can you still remember? Anybody or any of the three that's um, in class at the moment? Guys, you haven't had your coffee yet. Rookie mistake. Come, wake up. What have we done yesterday? Where did we end up yesterday? What have we done so far in Chapter 8? Um, so in the chat, I don't know if Sir can see the chat, but Luanda said pre-approach. Okay, sorry. Uh, I haven't scrolled all the way down. My apologies, guys. Sorry, uh, I can see the chat now. It wasn't um, scrolled all the way down to the bottom. My mistake. I've had my coffee, but... See, even if I have coffee, I made a mistake. The pre-approach case. And what is the pre-approach? What, what, what does it refer to? Can anybody help me? What does the pre-approach refer to? Remember, this chapter is about the approach. Um, it's used for preparing for the presentations through customer um, research and objection or goal planning okay and that's that's that happens during that time that you actually you've made an appointment remember the, the previous chapter we did about sales calls you've made the appointment you actually arrive for your appointment between that time that you actually arrive and the time that you introduce yourself to the customer and start talking in other words actually doing the presentation what we are going to be doing today um, that period, how you, um, 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 how you gather your final thoughts, how you um, introduce yourself, um, whatever else you use to, um, to, uh, to assist you in making a very good first impression. That, that period can be an awkward period because the two parties are not fam familiar with each other. You will have more information most likely on, about the prospect than they have about you and your products, so you've got a slight advantage and that should be your um, approach all the time. Um, that that um, um, in, in your preparation, you are you have the advantage. You are trying to sell something to the customer. You have information about the customer. You have information about the products that you are selling. The customer may have information about you, but they don't have information about the product. So you have that slight advantage, but only one opportunity to make that first impression, and um, um, and, and we, we dealt with a few ways in which you can do that um, um, to ensure that that, um, that moment is not an awkward moment. Right, the presentation itself. 
before the presentation, we said yesterday, um, could be um, at a neutral venue, but it could also be in your office. It could be in the prospect's office. Um, and it could be where the product is that you are selling. Um, we use the example of houses and offices that's going for rent and stuff like that, which can't be moved. Um, and basically, the salesperson, the seller, as well as the buyer, the prospect, need to go to that particular point where the product is. Now, whatever you use, um, any visuals, any spoken word, all of that um, about the products that you are attempting to sell, that you want to inform the prospect about, that forms part of your, um, of, of your presentation. In other words, what are you selling? What can you do for the customer? Where can they get it? And what's it going to cost? But most importantly, if you've done your planning correctly, you would direct your presentation to highlight the benefits that the customer will get from buying your product. Now, let's look at a couple of methods that we can use. We'll look at them individually. We've got the memorize, the formula, the need satisfaction, the stimulus response, the problem solving, and the group presentation. I think the group presentation is sort of self-explanatory, but let's look at each of these presentation methods individually. Firstly, the memorized one, um, about, Every single salesperson uses this, uses this kind of approach, especially if the product are, it is, um, it doesn't require any, um, a lot of technical um, um, in, instructions um, and features that needs to be explained. Right. In this particular approach or method that is used in your presentation, the salesperson is doing the majority of the talking. Uh, not a lot of opportunities um, um, are offered to the customer or to the prospect to actually answer questions. Um, and as a matter of fact, it, it's almost a sort of a prepared presentation, um, rather generic, used for um, most of the um, um, most mostly used the same presentation for different prospects. Um, and you've done a lot of preparation for this, but um, unfortunately, as I said, because it's so generic, and we look at the next slide, you have certain advantages that comes with this memorized um, um, method, and that is that um, you don't have to necessarily custom make this, um, uh, uh, when you take this approach, um, customize the presentation for different customers. In other words, you can see more customers um, because, um, um, your selling time is shorter. Um, you can actually see three, four, five clients in a row, and you don't have to prepare differently for each of those customers because you're doing the same presentation and you're sharing the same information. Um, it, it actually, the more you do it, the more repeated, um, it, um, especially if you're new to selling, uh, it helps build your confidence because you you learn from every single time. It's like preparing an oral that you have to do in school or a presentation that you have to come do in class. If you read through it the first time, it's fine. If you read through it the second time, it gets better. By the fifth, sixth time that you read through it, you actually almost know it by heart and you do not have to work off your cue cards, for instance. Um, it is very, as I've said in, um, previously, it's, it's, it's ideal if um, the products are not very technical. There's not a lot of steps that you have to demonstrate or, or, or explain uh, and a lot of technical um, 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 uh, names that, that you have to use um, um, in your presentation about the product itself. Uh, in other words, if you're selling, um, um, let's say, for instance, omega-3 um, health supplementary products, it's quite simple. Um, this is it. Um, this, um, not too much you need to know because people want to know is it safe, is it um, approved by the um, 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 medical um, um, foundation, um, is it published in a physician's desk reference, that book that the, that the um, doctor always checks before he actually writes his script. Um, and um, you just want to know what it does for you and that you have to take three every day um, and that's 
the better footage you can experience. And there's not a lot of technical stuff that needs to happen. Um, people know how to swallow pills. Um, so you don't have to um, to go into too much detail. Then there's another, um, um, some disadvantages as well, obviously that comes with something as generic as this that repeats itself. Um, it doesn't allow for, for, for much, pre, um, um, if any, uh, participation by the prospect. So it's, they're just listening and um, the product, the problem is that you, you, you might be sharing benefits um, 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 because there's a lot of information that's shared by the salesperson. Um, benefits that's not even relevant to the um, uh, to the pros um, to the prospect. So, uh, unnecessary information confuses people, uh, and they, they just don't see the value in in the product. Um, it definitely because you've been doing all the talking, um, and the, the buyer or the prospect is not really engaged um, or being given opportunities to to um, up, up to the point where they may have an objection. Um, you have to prompt them also to make a decision because they feel as if they are being pressured to make a decision because the salesperson is dominant in this um, presentation. Um, and very often, this approach, as much as the advantages that we've done just now, can um, can help an inexperienced um, salesperson to, to to gain confidence. It's also challenging because um, it can result in a lot of no's because um, there's no real um, prospect um, interaction. Another method would be the formula presentation, uh, similar to the previous one, but it's less structured. Um, Usually, initially in the in, in the presentation, the salesperson is is the dominant um, um, is the dominant person. Then he actually allows some uh, time for for comments and for questions, and then the salesperson takes control again after um, after the conversation um, and prepares to to close the sale. Um, very appropriate in situations where there's a, a, a straight purchase or where there's um, a purchase that slightly um, requires a slightly um, more technical information um, than with the memorized um, um, approach. Um, it's it's a question of this is the product that we have to offer. Uh, any questions, any objections, any comments about it? Okay, right, you have this question, fine, we can address that. Um, and once it's addressed, it's almost okay, right. The next step is Okay, right. Are you going to buy it? And how many do are you are, are you interested in buying? That's as simple as that. So it's it's those type of transactions. Um, the advantage is, is that um, the information is is provided logically because you are giving opportunity for the um, for the prospect to also um, contribute um, through um, um, comments and and questions. Uh, so there are this better um, interaction between the seller and the buyer or between the seller and the prospect, uh, or the salesperson and the prospect. And um, it definitely um, helps a great deal to, um, to identify more accurately if we're on the right track. In other words, have you made the correct connection between um, the customer's need and the product that you um, are offering? The disadvantage is, is that um, it's not too adaptable um, and also the customer might raise objections early on in the presentation uh, before you even got to preparation to close the sale um, and if you are not prepared correctly for the possible objections that you can have or possible questions that you can um, that you can expect um, it, it can lead to um, the prospect already very early on in the presentation deciding um, that this is not for, for him or for her. Right, let's look at another method. That's the need satisfaction presentation. Obviously, it's the one that we, that we want um, to follow the most, um, but especially when you um, are, are doing business with, um, um, if you are a salesperson who's doing business with, um, with big companies, with other businesses, uh, in other words, you're selling maybe photocopiers um, or, or products or um, machinery um, that um, 
and that um, people in the industrial industry um, um, need um, or people who need products that um, has a very technical nature and um, are going to be purchased on a um, more sort of a, a long-term basis. Um, it's not a product that um, like fax machine paper, um, um, copying machine, copy machine papers that you need to replace when it's finished at the end of every month. Um, you definitely, because there's going to be a lot of interaction um, with um, between the buyer and uh, or between the salesperson and the prospect or the buyer. Um, <coughs> your planning, my apologies, your planning has to be a bit more thorough. Um, you have to be very creative. You have to uh, prepare um, a couple of different possible outcomes um, because you're not exactly sure what the um, customer is going to um, object to. But it allows you the opportunity to also prepare very specific questions that will lead you to um, correctly identify what the, what, what the customer wants and what type of information they require. Um, on this product. We have some advantages for this particular method, and that is um, that um, <clears throat> proper preparation that include a list of the correct questions that will lead you to identifying the needs of the customer correctly is going to help you to quickly respond to any questions or objections that the customer might have. The information you have at the, your fingertips, okay, because you've prepared for with, with different um, with different um, possible so for the different possible scenarios. Um, it is also um, troublesome and a disadvantage of this particular method is that you have to take a lot of care um, when you're trying to uncover the prospect's needs. Very often um, they don't want to disclose it um, immediately. They also want to, um, they almost only going to, um, to share um, that valuable part of information that you need when they feel comfortable uh, in how you have dealt with the initial objections. And if you are providing, if you're actually, if they can see there's evidence that you are listening to them and that you actually um, are responding to the questions by providing the correct information and that you're not just working off a prepared script. Um, for the salesperson, the disadvantage is that because um, there's a lot of possible scenarios that can unfold, um, it, it, it can leave the salesperson with the feeling that they are not in control of the situation. Um, this is a kind of approach that you don't initially take, but once you become confident and you have gained experience in, in sales and you've, you've heard a lot of um, um, objections, uh, and you dealt with, the, with with a variety of different clients, you become um, used to um, handling uh, situations like this. And um, experienced salespeople will tell you, this is what gives them the buzz every day. They are looking for customers who have a lot of questions and a lot of objections because it becomes almost, um, it becomes almost, um, um, for them um, an achievement to try and, uh, well not to try and, um, to actually persuade that customer, not pressure the customer, but persuade the customer by providing them the correct information and establishing a sufficient um, 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 trust between both parties. Um, that's a, that's a sort of a victory for the salesperson, and they almost live for um, for situations like this where customers um, are more challenging. Um, it's almost like the South African rugby team playing against everybody in the world, but the game against the All Blacks always the 
the one that they look up to, that's uh, look forward to. That's the one they want to win because that's the sort of a um, international benchmark. Okay, that's the tough ones. And once you get through those, you you, you feel um, every winner is, is 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 obviously is is great, but um, those ones are slightly more rewarding to them in in some way. Right. Everybody else that has joined, um, Keenan, Tlacho, welcome. Um, another method that we can use for our presentation is the problem solving one. Um, you have to, and especially in cases where there's um, a lot of technical detail that has to be shared um, by the salesperson with the prospect, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a product that um requires because of its complexity a lot of um explanations different steps that have to be followed correctly and in the correct chronological order for you to um have experienced the benefit from that product uh, for it to actually work for you and um and and satisfy the need that you that you have expressed um, like a machine working, if the machines, um, if you skip a certain step, the machine's not going to work um, um, uh, and give you the end result that you that you actually anticipated and expect. Um, so before you start such a presentation, you have to develop a very detailed, or make a very detailed analysis of the customer's needs. Um, this is the type of, um, of of customers. Remember in previous chapters when we did our territorial. Um, um, planning. Um, we also address. Um, we also categorize certain customers as A account, B account, C account type of customers. This is an A account customer. This is somebody that's going to be doing a lot of business with you. So you do a lot of um, preparation um, um, in advance before the presentation actually happens. Because and you take a lot of time with the presentation as well. You're not you're not um, in a rush to complete the presentation because uh, thoroughness is the key here uh, um, because of the the technical and complex um, um, nature of this particular transaction and or, or product that you are selling. Um, you, as I said, if you are well prepared, it will obviously um, it will obviously be no it's not an advantage. You have to be well prepared if you want to be able to solve the problem um, that the customer has. So you are, and the advantage that you have is when you, when you arrive with, um, at, such a, um, um, at such a buyer, you know what their problem is, and you have prepared a solution that you want to share with them. So you are not going to sell the product, you're going to sell the solution to the problem. In other words, what's the advantages and the benefits that the customer is going to get from buying this product from you? The disadvantages of this particular um, um, problem solving method of a presentation is that um, it's, it's time consuming. It takes a lot of preparation time um, and it takes a lot of um, delivery. Um, time to deliver the presentation. Um, it is at the end of the day, however, very rewarding because usually this type of business is the one that you do want to have in, on your books because once you have them as a client or as a customer, it will be easy to satisfy them or to keep them satisfied um, and, and convert them to, to, to loyal supporters of your organization and brand and product. Then there's a group presentation. There's one that often happens um, in, in also in such scenarios where there's not just one decision maker. It's not you and you're presenting a product to a, um, doing a presentation on a product to one customer. And that customer is the person who's going to need that product and who's going to buy that product and has the authority to make a decision to, to do both of those. Um, group presentations often um, it's 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 Often protocol when businesses do, um, or when you do business with um, with a business, when a salesperson does business with with, um, with companies where um, 
a number of directors or a number of managers or a number of partners in the business all have to be present and all will be present for your presentation. So you can prepare yourself um, as thoroughly as possible again, but you have to also realize that a lot of flexibility is going to be required because um, different people um, in the room with you, not just one per person um, with um, questions and, and comments and objections, um, there will be more than well, at least two or three. When you do a presentation to a group, make sure of the following, that you do a proper introduction, not just, hi, my name is Sam and I'm representing um, Nashua, um, copiers and printers. Um, no, that's not, you've got to go a bit further. You've got to uh, ensure that maybe even um, do a quick summary of the business and when they were established, how long they've been in business. Um, point number three, provide an account list, maybe also include um, a few names of other customers um, that you have been dealing with, because that will help with step number two, and that's establishing a credibility. Uh, because if, in, if if a group of managers or a group of directors um, are listening to a presentation, they want to know that you know what we can actually we can actually trust this company. Um, they've got an extensive list of, of of customers who are satisfied. Some of them are competitors in, in our same industry, um, so that definitely is a good indication for us that um, that we are going with a credible um, supplier and that we also um, can expect a high quality of um, of products and um, and service. Um, <clears throat> the other preparation that you have to do is that you have to prepare for different behavioral styles. Different people in the room, different characteristics, they have different positions in the company, they're going to come with um, and they're going to um, react to the same information that you are sharing with everybody, they're going to react to it differently and you have to be prepared for that. Um, it is very important after you've completed your presentation, which needs to be very, very thorough, but to the point. In other words, it's not a, a three-day seminar. It's still just a presentation, but um, um, you will have to allow sufficient time in your planning initially, and then also when you do your presentation, um, for questions by everybody. You need everybody's input. There's not one individual that keeps quiet and doesn't contribute. All of them need to um, give their approval. You don't want three people out of five to contribute and ask questions and comments and uh, require more information and two people just sit there and nod their heads um, and, and keep quiet. And then when the final votes out, those are the ones who have persuaded the other three that it's actually not because they've kept whatever has been bothering them to themselves. Um, it needs to be um, it, it needs to be a complete involvement by everybody. And that's your main objective that you obviously because then everybody will be involved and, and happy um, that they've had an opportunity to share. Right. We're going to finish with two um, specific um, methods, the FAB one and then also the CELL. Uh, the FAB sequence referred to what we have um, identified previously as well, the features, the advantages and the benefits. Um, and this is where you are going to relate the benefits that the product offers the customer with um, the needs that the customer have. Um, and you're going to be doing it in the following manner. You're going to um, ensure that you tell them about the features first, then you show them the advantages um, and the, finally the benefits that they can gather from this. The cell sequence as opposed to the fab sequence, and you can remember both people, both fab and cell is going to appear at some point in some question, class test, exam, or, um, or test. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, in which particular format, to be honest with you, um, there's also a variety of, of options there. The cell sequence helps the salesperson to um, get to um, sharing the benefits with the customer in the best possible um, order. In other words, 
You show the features first. You explain the advantages that they each offer. That will lead the customer to the benefits and they will have the floor for themselves then. To comment, to say, wow, this is great. I have want to have five. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but um, uh, if, you can, if you can actually get this item for me in the green and orange, then I definitely will take, um, um, uh, then definitely place an order. That's what you um, are um, uh, trying to do with the cell sequence, and that's how the cell sequence works. That's basically the order in which you're going to um, do fab, if I can put it that way. Has anybody got any questions for me at this at, at this stage? Flatu, anybody? Wonder is good. No, sir, all good. Fantastic. It's good to hear. It's good to hear. Right, let me leave you with this following one before we finish the session. Very, very appropriate quote. You don't need a big close. Many sales reps believe that that's actually what they have to do. When you leave everything for the end, the risk of losing, you actually risk of losing your customers. You lose, you, you risk losing your customers when you save all the good stuff for the end. By that time that you actually get to the good stuff, the customers are already made up his mind that, that he doesn't want to do business with you. Okay, so make sure that when you pre, when you do your preparation for your presentation, that you kick off with the good stuff because that's what people want. I mean, are you going to sit through an entire half an hour presentation and then right at the end somebody says to you, know what? Um, this product can save you three hours of your time every day. Or if you buy this device, it actually will add three hours of battery life to your phone. You lead with that. You don't leave it till the end because immediately um, the benefit um, is, is, um, is, is offered. Start in your presentation. The feature of this product is, is, is that um, it has this and it has that and it has that. And how does that benefit you? It will save you time. It's going to make you more productive. It's going to make you more efficient. Those are the things that you get out there within the first two, three minutes of your presentation. Okay. I have, as I said at the start, um, before everybody that um, that attended class this morning was 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 present, that um, I went on to Canvas and I saw that not too many of you, um, actually nobody, uh, to be frank, has done the class test yet. This is therefore just a reminder that your class test has been um, available the whole of yesterday. And it has also been, as I said in class yesterday, I'm not going to remind you that you have a class test. Uh, you have to look at your timetable. Um, more than that, I, 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 I can't do. You have to um, take responsibility for, um, for um, knowing when there are class tests and submissions of assignments and like the tests and exams and stuff like that. Um, so if you didn't know that the class test was available yesterday already, it's maybe because you haven't attended sessions yesterday. Um, the class tests were available the whole of yesterday, and it's still available the whole of today up to um, 12 o'clock tonight. It's multiple choice. It takes you half an hour, and there's only 25 questions. Okay. Do you have any questions or anybody has any questions until um, we break and see each other again in the fourth period? Are we all good? Lawanda says he's fine. Are you still fine, Lawanda? Anybody else? Keenan? Talking? Sean? You all good? All good. Thank you very much, Sean. Right. Thanks for this morning session. Thanks for getting up early. Um, you started the day at, in the right manner. It's only going to get better. Um, 
Much love to you, Wills um, and everybody else. Um, I'll chat to you again just after, um, what's it, 10.20? Wednesday, Wednesday, yeah, 10.20 is the, is the fourth period. Okay, have a nice morning. Um, do attend the second period with Ms. Van Skoor. I'm going to check. A class is right next to mine. I'm going to walk there and I'm going to check and see if you guys have signed up um, um, and logged on for her session. I don't want you to do the class this during her class. Okay, I'm going to check on that. Keep well. We'll chat again later this morning.